Your dad is fucking awesome. He's a good I dude, do. man. He's lost like he's under. He weighs like 190 pounds. Wow. Now he was like 280. Wow. Now he's 190. And he's like, it's fucking unbelievable. I just keep losing weight. I said, Dad, have you been checked for cancer? <laughs> Are you dying? Uh, like, yeah. He, yeah. Like, he never even thought of that. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> he was like, I haven't even changed nothing. It's just the weight's coming off. <laughs> this is a man who was hospitalized because he ate too much pizza, yes, correct? Exactly. Eldest, I don't know if you know this story. He literally, right, yep. ate so much pizza, he like, his what was it? His so what happened was he tell me. At two Christmases ago, he or two or three Christmases ago, he ate like an entire tray of lasagna. <laughs> Right, like the entire tray it was supposed to be. His wife put it out for like the party, and my dad down the whole tray <laughs> before anybody got there. That's fucking and awesome. Then she was like, "Tony, that was for the party." <laughs> so he went crazy. He was just fucking yeah. sucking it. He was watching yeah. college football, or whatever. Just yeah. throwing it back. So whatever, we have the party. You know, Christmas Day, whatever. He eats even more. You know, yeah. he just ate cake, cookies, whatever. And then that night, he was. So I was sleeping over, and that night, and he wakes up. I hear him and my stepmom talking. He's like, Tony, can you breathe? What's going on? He's like, give me the hospital. Give me the hospital. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, holy shit. So I wake up. What happened? He's like, your father can't breathe. I'm like, holy shit. He's like, but I, I don't think he's having a heart attack, but something's wrong. So we get, get him to the hospital. They you know, hook him up to the machines, whatever. The next morning, you know, one of the doctors comes and says, listen, you know, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, like, you know, he, he's OK for right now, but he does have congestive heart failure. The beginnings of stage one congestive heart failure. You know, honestly, he probably has like a year or two. Like people just don't live <laughs> long with this. Basically, what's happening is he explains to me. He said, basically, what's happening is, is he's, you know, got so much swelling in his heart that his his, his blood, his heart can't pump the blood properly because of years of a reading and, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. His blah, blood blah. is so thick. Yes. That, like, he's, he's not even having a heart attack. Yeah. He has made his blood so fatty and thick yes. that his blood cannot it, pump it. It cannot pump. His <laughs> blood literally turned into regatta. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then, so we're like upset. Like I do it. I was like crying. I was like, oh shit. I spoke to my friend who's a ER doctor. He was like, yeah, it's not good. Like I could have told you that was going to happen to your dad. He's a yeah, wild man, yeah, but yeah, like yeah, he lived yeah. a good life, whatever. Yeah. So then I'm dealing with that. About eight hours later, they call me. They say, hey, listen, um, a mini miracle has happened. They said, we just reran his blood and his congestive heart failure is gone. And they said, what we think happened was is he had so much sodium in one sitting that he actually fooled our EKG machines into thinking he had congestive heart failure and was going to die in a year. <laughs> That's so awesome <laughs> to be that. Those levels of fat are like I'm like I, I feel like I'm a guy in like junior college watching fucking Michael Jordan. I'm like, yeah. wow, I, that would kill me. I could never do that. Yeah, That's he, so literally, it literally it, it expanded his heart the amount of sodium. And then once all he had to do was they gave him, you know, they giving him water and diuretics because that's what was going to be the kind of treatment for that anyway. And then his levels just went back to normal because he just pissed out the sodium from the entire. <laughs> of lasagna and plate of cookies he ate and then like and then he just literally like gets out of the hospital like it feels like he has a whole new lease on life and he wanted to go to arby's <laughs> first stop first doesn't stop. want to kiss his grandchildren Dude, but my stepmother would, so my stepmother the only way to control my dad my dad loves my kids his grandkids yeah my stepmother made a rule and it actually worked where she would say tony you cannot see the kids unless your blood sugar is below one ten. Wow! So that so she was so she would test his finger, and if it was above one ten, she's like, "You can't. You, that's wow. it. I'm taking the kids away." That's so that, crazy. that motivated him to not have that last cook. And then she'd be like, "Do you want to see Delilah? Do not put that cookie yeah, in your mouth." That's and then she'd awesome. test his finger, and if he was under one ten, he could come. That's crazy. <laughs> so this man, this is the man who just thought naturally his body was healing. He naturally <laughs> thought he changed some of the diet. He was like, he, you know, he said, "Oh, like his dieting was." Instead of eating like the cheeseburger, he wouldn't eat the bun. He would just eat like right. the meat, the bacon, and the cheese, which I know is keto. Yeah. But that's what he would do. Or he said, oh, I'd only eat like a little bit less. I wouldn't have like the snacks. Or he he would say, you know, I do the intermittent fasting. He's like, I stopped eating at like 7 o'clock. But I'm like, yeah, but you're still having 4,000 calories <laughs> yeah, yeah, from 10 yeah, to 7. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. he just literally, you know, every time I'd see him, because he lives in Tampa, he'd be losing a little bit more weight, a little bit more weight. And I'm like thinking, oh, whatever, not question. Then when it got from 280 to 180, he didn't even think. He was like, dude, it's just coming off. <laughs> It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. He's like, I'm hitting my prime. I said, you could literally have cancer. Yeah. Like, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. The signs and is he good? What's no. Going so on? he goes to the doctor, and immediately they put him up. You know, they test his. You know, uh, you know, they give him evaluation, whatever. As soon as they put the EKG, 
thing on his heart. They said, you have a heart arrhythmia. You need to go to the hospital immediately. <laughs> the reason you've been losing so much weight is because your heart is not conducting properly electrically. Wow. So your body is like shedding weight because your heart is pumping so hard internally. It's like you're running a marathon every day of your life, but you're just sitting there not feeling it at all. That's crazy. So it is absolutely 100% because you have a heart condition that needs to be fixed immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and he wow. was in emergency surgery immediately. This is like the fifth time where the doctors have been like, I cannot believe you survived this for years of your life. <laughs> like, do you think, like, I think about your dad a lot, right? I don't know. I mean, we went to, I met him a couple of times. Yeah. We were randomly at a Knicks game, which was one of the best. Oh, I love it. I still remember that. That was one of the funnest, like, just seeing you and your dad was <laughs> yeah. so sick. You and Sam behind us. Yeah, it was fucking perfect. We had we had such a great time. If only the Knicks, and the Knicks were winning the first half. Yeah. That first half was, was one amazing. of the best. Was that a playoff game? I'm it was trying to yeah, 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 the Heat series. Yeah. Um, but I think, all, like, how many guys? Because the the classic, because your dad, you you talked about it, right? Yeah. I'm not fucking saying anything. Your dad was in the mob, literally. Right, right. He went, you know. But how many people? No one gets out of the mob, right? No. You you die or you spend like a life sentence, right? right. Your dad, you know, spent a little time. Yeah. You know, spent a little time. Did yeah. a, did a little bit here or there, but. Pretty much gets out. Yeah. Right? Like, doesn't, you know, never really faced crazy. He wasn't like they seized no. his assets no. or anything. Like, no. was a great dad to you, the right? Best. Like, was with you constantly. The best. Great, he's a great grandfather. Has survived multiple marinara sauce health incidents, <laughs> yes. right? Like, just has a nice house, lives in fucking Florida. Yeah. Has a, you told me, still fucks his wife, even yep. though he's old as shit. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know what I mean? Like, Dick yeah. still works. Yeah. It's like, he might be one of the luckiest guys of all time. He, he like, is. it feels like the, he lives an enchanted life. Right. Like, where he has, like, a fairy god, a little fairy godmother. He, and he literally, like, he is one of those guys, like, luck. He, he will tell you, though, like, when, it's interesting, because when I look at my father, I'm like, what a lucky man, right? And then, like, when he talks to me, like, I remember, like, the lessons from when I was a kid, when he would pick me up from my mother's house in Queens and drive me in three hours worth of traffic back to his house on Staten Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would yeah. just have life lessons. He would talk to me about the Yankees and yell at me about, like their pitching staff yeah, and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, 11. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, and then, but he would always tell me, he's like, I remember he would tell me, if you want to know exactly what not to do in life, you look no further than your father. Mm. You do not want to be this. Mm. So you just see what I'm doing in life and you do the opposite and you'll be okay. And I remember hearing that being like, you're like a the man. Yeah, like, you're, like the, you're an absolute hero. And when I would tell that to my mom, she'd be like, you listen to your father. Right, right, He's right. an asshole. You know, right. but I never, because I do understand now as I've gotten older, like I tell story on stage about like when he took me to Yankee Stadium and he made me, you know, we we're a Dwight Gooden's no hitter and he made me make believe I had special needs to right. get better seats behind <laughs> right, home plate. Right, right, and, right, you know, right. this whole thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I get as an adult now how like a mother would be like, I cannot spend my life with this man. He's an idiot. But to a child, the to man. The old, he was my my of course, hero. Of course. So it's like, so I never saw him that way. But as I've gotten older, like I almost tell him, like I, I am on your side. I will run into a burning building for you. But I 100% agree with mom for divorcing you. Right, I know right. Of she course. had to do what she had to do. And I get it. But he is, It's he's an interesting thing because he doesn't see what we see right you know and there is a part of two of my comedy that of course i embellish to make him this superhero guy the, the lasagna stuff is word for word but that's what, what i'm saying <laughs> you know I embellishments him, aside right embellishments aside this is a guy who was straight up got out of the mob and like didn't you know what i mean yeah, like, like he, he he was well because the thing is with him is like he wasn't oh because he's a half german too, right so it was like that ray liotta thing where it's like he never really right. was like a made guy like those guys couldn't you can't get out right my right, dad right. was more of like um not even an associate like just yeah working around you know with the guys gambling and kind sure. of around so he was that was those are his crews but so did I, he have a real job when you were growing no, up exactly no, no exactly i remember yeah. i would call in a number it was a different number almost every month he would <laughs> yeah, tell my mom yeah, what the new number is yeah. and then i would call that number and he or someone would pick up and go accounting <laughs> <laughs>